This is a quick video of my AR drone 2.0 and the drone and the mods I've done to it thus far. It's seven days old, about. Can't remember exactly. I believe it is. Um, first mod I did to it was uh, I take 3 in 1 oil. You have to make sure it's petroleum based oil because when you go to oil, I oil every single. If you look up under here, those are brass bushings that the main pin rides on. See how it's two different colors? There, that's a better look. The pin glides on brass bearings. You can actually buy bearings. They're two by three by two millimeters. There's one on top and bottom. Can't really get a good view of the top one. She's a little dirty at the moment. I haven't cleaned her. But one of the biggest things I do is I take my three in one oil and I thoroughly oil the inside between the two bearings I oil inside the where the shaft slides through the plastic on the gear and the propeller and I do this for all four and I also lube the moving point any time any place there is a surface on this that moves I oil it uh, I had a drone parrot 2.0 that before I purchased this one, uh, I had a flyaway issue with it. It got out of range, and wind took it, and I lost it. Uh, but that's that's one thing I do all the time, just to make sure that it... And I take it apart about daily. Once I'm done flying it for the day, I take all of this, the whole structure apart all the way around, and give it a good cleaning because these bearings one, one thing you will notice the more you, once you get it it's it's a really nice fit it's nice and tight i'm very impressed by it. i mean it's a little expensive the 300 dollars piece of styrofoam but one thing you have to realize you're not buying this you're buying this hd camera the computer board inside as you can see i mean it, you can't really see the computer board i can do a quick show of the actual computer board there's actually two you have a main board and what is called a stability board But as you can see, the big one is the main board. This is your stability board. The one I had before this one, I actually had a problem with the main board where this right here will come apart, will unsolder, because this board right here plugs into this board. This right here is the USB, I mean the HD camera. This is the ultrasound sensors. This is the VGA camera which basically keeps it in flight these are USB pins that put out 1.8 volts none are grounded though so that's pretty damn stupid uh, of course you can see the wires up underneath you have two wiring harnesses you have two black and red no uh, one black and red wire going to each motor and then another three wires to control. So you actually have two wiring harnesses to plug in. But that is the computer itself. I don't know how many people have actually shown that. But you have to, when you put it back on, one of the most important parts is this camera back here. You cannot cover it. So... Put it on. Lightly press down all the way around. Sorry. 
Make sure she's back in place. Okay, uh, modifications. As you see, I do have a hole in the side of the hole. That is purpose. Um, for those that do not have one, uh, if you ever get a chance to fly one or purchase one, after you get done flying it, touch the bottom surface. That board inside there gets hot. So, what I did was, it's basically the same thing I did with this. Um, a lot of people want more room inside their holes, like I have this hole right here. A tip that I got that will make it so much easier than pulling out the inside and losing the structural rigidity is take a lighter and slowly... It doesn't melt it away, it just condenses the little foam beads. But as you see, I was able to go into the back some, and I have lost no structure, no structural rigidity, none. Top, I mean, everything's just as strong as it was because it's not, I did not lose any of the structure. I just condensed them. I mean, you can see my thumb actually goes back in there, so. I have a plan to uh, get it, do the mod to 2.4 gigahertz radio, and then just record directly to the USB. And then once I get it back, I'll look at it and I'll learn from there how to take the best photographs and things like that. <clears throat> but the cooling ports, that one there, I'm still going to get some screens and put there on the inside facing out uh, to prevent foreign objects. On this one, I'm probably going to put one on the inside and one on the outside. And I have two on the back. So I have an input and two outputs. The outputs are smaller. Not much, but they are. Um, the camera. One thing a lot of people do that I do is I, I like the biggest thing I like about it is the fact that I can get aerial footage with it. And I can actually take pictures and video. And uh, basically what you do is you lift up the camera. You grab it from behind here. And you lift it up. Don't lift it from the front because if you do you're going to rip that wire and it's going to be useless. Um, but you lift it up. Uh, I've been told by many people epoxy is the best to use on this, but one of the glues that I have actually found that works best with this and is really, really fast, hot glue. Get really sticky hot glue. And it it doesn't get to the... Because I glued this right here in place on the back with hot glue. So it did not damage the camera. Let's put a battery in her. On the first, I will be ordering the maximum battery, the 2100 or the 2500 milliamp an hour. So I'll get double the range. I already have three batteries from, I've had three of these things to be, tell you the truth. I've had crashes and wrecks and an X brace. This, this actual brace itself broke in the center. And, and it only fell from like 10 feet and I took it back and they said user user beware or some BS like that and I was out $320 because that's how much they cost with tax 320 and some change well, we got the battery in here hook it up everybody knows how to hook up a battery I don't think I really need to show that Hang on. <clears throat> of course, when it first comes on, the lights flash red. Starts from propeller one, goes all the way around, make sure they're all working. Once it turns green, you know it's good, it's ready to fly. Um, 
one of the, like I said, one of the best ways to get away and to really open up the inside cavity is a lighter for this. But when you're doing this, I actually found a cigarette puts out just the right amount of heat to condense these little beads. So I was able to put this hole big enough. My finger fits right in it. And I, I wear size nine and a half rings, so that gives you an idea of how big my fingers are. Uh, my pinky. My pinky will completely fit in it. I'm not going to, it's plugged in at the moment, so I ain't going all the way in, but you can see. I mean, I they go pretty far in. Basically a hole in the side of the hull to give it better air circulation for the main board because that really doesn't give you much i mean it's just covered you get a little from the foam but the foam going in and around and down and one thing i also noticed when you do this there's a pressure sensor inside that measures barometric pressure so when you get above 10 meters the ultrasonic or i mean the ultrasound sensors don't work past 10 meters so one thing that they added to the two the two things that they really added no three things that they added to the 2.0 is the absolute flight meaning no matter what its orientation is to you if you tilt it towards you it's going to come back towards you whatever you're using to control it if you tilt it like you want it to come back to you it does not matter what orientation the craft itself is in <clears throat> but it will come back to you the second being the HD wide-angle camera and the third being the pressure sensor inside it used to be if you went above 10 meters you were basically flying blind well it was flying blind you were you were having to fight things to I never flew one I saw this and I was like, you know what, I want this. I never knew about these till I saw the 2.0 at my local Verizon store. That's where I purchased this. But they are incredibly sophisticated little gadgets. The battery, I will admit, sucks. It's nothing but a glorified cell phone battery. 1,000 milliamps an hour, that's, hell, most cell phone batteries are more than that. But it's meant to discharge rapidly for the motors. The motors spin at 22,500 RPM at idle. So at a hover, they're spinning at 22,500. And I think they max out at 50,000 RPM. They're brushless, meaning it has a solid state magnet in the armature instead of putting brushes to create an electromagnet in the armature. Very nice, very expensive, but very nice little RC. Uh, I'm actually looking to get a Blitz RC SR71. It's 190, no, 189.99, but it has retractable gear and two 63 millimeter, I believe, electronic ducted fans. It gets up to about 100 mile an hour. That would be something that I would have to go to a field or something to fly. The funnest thing about this, you can fly it in your house. Uh, yeah, I, I honestly don't recommend it because ashes, if you smoke, uh, and honestly, if you crash, you're going to bend a pin. That's one of the worst things is when you crash these little pins, unless you buy the titanium ones, they will bend. And sometimes I have actually broken one. But thankfully, the the drones that I've had in the past, I kept all the parts. So I have replaced part replacement parts from three drone. Well, two drones. The other one, like I said, had a flyaway issue. But that's about it. As you see, like I said, the cooling ports, and that also gives uh, the pressure sensor a more accurate reading of the air coming directly into it because not only do you have that you have the two back ones so you have 
instead of just a piece of foam letting air in and little cracks by the ultrasound sensors you actually have a big hole for air to move in and out of so it can read where it's at a lot better there's actually an app i can't remember what it's called but it'll actually tell you your altitude your speed all kind of stuff with the ios you automatically get that but us android people are still waiting for our damn update parrot it would be nice if you would make an update for us so we can play the games because not everybody wants a damn apple uh, that's about it as you see the lights are red at the moment because i went out of angle if you go more than 90 degrees it will go into emergency mode and automatically shut down all the motors i actually had a problem with uh one of mine that actually did that and it fell from about a hundred feet Shorted out the main board, had to replace the main board with an old one that I had. Had problems with it with the uh, control wiring harness where it plugged into the board. The, the little pins were bent so I had to straighten them. And then once I put everything together, that was the one that eventually flew away. And my legs are cut up from thorns and stuff trying to run through the woods trying to catch it. And I have searched pretty well in the area that I lost it and I can't find it I'm pretty sure somebody probably picked it up hell it's three hundred dollars if you don't want it pawn it sell it three hundred dollars right there but that's the mods I got the camera the hole in the hole and I'm eventually gonna get the the gear protectors the stealth gear protectors the O light that goes up under the bottom so I can fly at night. You cannot fly this at night because it always has to be able to have a image of the ground. You can, but you have to control it completely yourself. It will not automatic cover. Uh, my hull itself, where'd it go? Down here. <clears throat> I've already modded it for extra room because there's something called the Phi Li Phi. Uh, basically it is a GPS device that you can put in one if you lose it you call it if you lose this you put the file Li Fi di device on top of this on top of the battery with a velcro if you lose it you call it you call the file Li Fi device that'll be on top of it and then it'll ring one one to three times and then it'll automatically hang up on you Within about five minutes, you will get a text message. It uses GPS and triangulation methods with the cell phone towers. And you get a link via text message to Google Maps, which shows exactly where your drone, well, where your Wi-Fi li -fi gadget is at and whatever you have your file Li-Fi on so like if I put it on this $300 gadget if I lose it I can call the file Li-Fi find it and find the drone at the same time that I think is I mean yeah they have the GPS black box that'll show all of them oh yeah show how high it went and all that cool shit I don't give a damn about that I want to be able to find it if I lose it but that's it I hope this was a decent video i don't really care if you reply about any comments or anything this is just a show of what i've done later